So what happens is it, it bends. It's entering from air. Of course, index of refraction is larger than 1. So it bends closer to the normal. It travels to here. And then, and then here, it strikes the surface. So we have the normal now, perpendicular. And so it emerges. Now it bends away from the normal. So it comes out at, we're told, 60 degrees. I want to find the index of refraction. So from this knowledge of these two angles, what is n? Again, this problem involves two refractions. So the only thing we can do is use Snell's law for each one of these two refractions. For the first refraction, I have n air sine 53 degrees is equal to n, which is my unknown, sine the angle, the angle of refraction, this one, Let's call it alpha, sine alpha. Now, n air is 1. Sine 53 uh, is 0 0.8. OK, 53 and 37, besides 13, 45, 60, and 90, the other two angles that have simple sine and cosine are 53. It's not exactly 53. It's like 53.13. But for all practical purposes, we just say it as 53. Sine 53 is 0 0.8. And its cosine is 0 0.6. And for 37, it's the other way around. The sine is 0 0.6 and the cosine is 0 0.8. So sine 53 is 0 0.8, is n sine alpha. So our first, n is unknown and alpha is unknown. So our first equation is n sine alpha is 1 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.8. This is one equation. N is unknown, and alpha is unknown. Now we write Snell's law at the second interface. Here, I know the angle in the air, 60. But I don't know the angle in the plastic. Let's go to beta. So we know that N plastic sine beta, that's Snell's law, is equal to n air sine 60. n air is 1. So this is 1 sine 60, which is root 3 over 2. So now I know that n sine beta is square root of 3 over 2. So I have two equations. But my unknowns are n and alpha and beta. However, there's one connection between alpha and beta, in fact. So what is it? It's that since this is rectangular, the block, so the, this normal is horizontal. And the normal here is vertical. 
and they meet at 90 degrees. So this means that alpha plus beta is 90 degrees. That's the third relationship which we need. So I also know that alpha plus beta is 90 degrees. This means that this means that sine beta is cosine alpha because it's beta is 90 minus alpha. So sine beta is sine 90 degrees minus alpha. And sine 90 minus alpha is cosine alpha. Like, for example, sine 30 is the same as cosine 60 because they differ by, because 60 is 90 minus 30. So it's sine, sine 60 is cosine 30. So sine 90 minus alpha is cosine alpha. So sine beta is cosine alpha. So now the second equation here becomes, and instead of sine beta, I can put cosine alpha. And cosine alpha is root 3 over 2. And here I have n sine alpha is 0 0.8. So what is n? Square both sides and add them up. So I get n square sine square alpha plus n square cosine square alpha equals n square sine square alpha is 0 0.8 square, and n square cosine square alpha from here is root 3 over 2 square, plus 3 over 4. But n square sine square plus n square cosine square, this is n square into sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha. And sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha is 1. So 1 times n squared, so this is n squared. So n squared is 0 0.8 squared plus 3 over 4. 0 0.8 squared is 0 0.64 plus 0 0.75. So this is 1.39. So n squared is 1.39. Therefore, n is final answer. n is square root of 1.39, which is about 1.18. This is the index of refraction of the plastic. Again, what's the moral here? Same thing like in the previous problem. You look at the figure and you see two refractions. So you have to apply. Snell's law twice. So that's exactly what we did. Beyond that, it's uh, being smart about trig. Like, you know, to figure it like here, you have to see that the angle beta plus the angle alpha is 90 degrees. And that allows you to see that sine beta is same as cosine alpha.